I want us to turn on our feet. Let's worship God a little in the name of Jesus. Let's give God the praise, the adoration in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus reign. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus reign. Let me hear you say.
glory. Be happy. When you are happy, you are smiling. Even if you are sick, you get make the devil to be confused. Be happy. Be happy. Father, we bless you. We give you praise. We give you glory. Lord, if there is somebody to praise you, I am the one. I am praising you for me being alive. I'm not dead. Oh, Lord, I thank you. For me, showing me the truth, I am appreciating you always. God, I love you. I give you praise. I give you glory. Hey, Lord, we love you. Jesus, your daughters, your children have gathered before you. We want you to take us deeper into your love. We want you to save our soul. We want you to open our eyes. Father, we bless you. Lord, we glorify you. In Jesus' name, we have worship. Father, we have come before you, O oh God, our creator. We are here to hear from you. Take us deeper into your word. Father, we need you every day. Every day in our lives. Teach us your way. Lord, we want to hear from you, not from me. God, you are the one. Jesus, speak to your children. God, they have been before you. They are sitting here, we're not going vain. All of us, as we hear you, will amend our ways. And Father, as the time is getting closer for your coming, Lord, we will rapture. Show us mercy in any way we have sinned against you. Let your name be glorified. As we continue, Holy Spirit, continue with us. Give us great strength to hear your word. Take away the power of sleep, demonic spell. We destroy it in this hall in Jesus' name. We cover every heart, every hair with the blood of Jesus. I take away every deception, every hardened heart towards the word of God. I destroy the plan of Satan every, over every soul. Jesus, I hand over ourselves, everyone here to you. Take us and let your name be glorified. For in Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Put your hands together as you take your beautiful seat. God bless you all in Jesus' name. I'm so happy to be here again. Thank you for inviting me. God bless you all in Jesus' name. The message today we are going to hear is going to be mixed with my revelation. Before I go into the message, last night I had a dream I was before women, but daddy was the one invited in that program. And it was a small church like this. So daddy was like, he was sitting up in the stairs like this, but high a little. He told me in the dream that you are going to preach. I said, ah, but daddy, you are the one they invite for this conference. But in the dream, he was telling me that, no, go and preach. So, you know when somebody is not prepared, and it's, I'm not like daddy. Daddy know the word. They have been in it. He can just open Bible and start preaching. Me, I need to read, 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 right? <laughs> because we are all learning. So, I was confused in that dream. I begin to open Bible and say, what will I preach? Which scripture will work with this word? I want to pray this, that. Then he turned to me and said, can't you see can't you see what you will preach? I said, I cannot, I cannot see. I don't know what to preach. He said, all the women sitting before you, only a few percent of them that have not deviated from my truth. So go and tell them that they should go back, examine their life, and make their way right because I am coming. He stood up from there and left me, and then he went away that I should preach. So I started looking, but I said one, two words, and then everybody was agreeing. People were crying. Then I woke up in the dream. So when I woke up, I said, ah, what kind of dream is this? Then the Holy Spirit witness to me, this is the topic. So this is it. Examine yourself if you are a holy woman. Hallelujah. So I just woke up from that dream and I wrote it because what did he say to the dream? Tell them, majority of them sitting before me, they have left my way. And you know when a man of God is seen in your dream, there is Jesus talking. Amen? So he left there and said, tell them, that is what you will preach. Don't bother turning Bible. So I started saying one, two, one, like condemning sin. Then I saw women, but it was mixed with men too. But the women were more. They were happy. They stood up and began to, hey, Jesus, thank you. Then I woke up in the dream. So today we are here. The theme of this women's conference is exemplary lifestyle of a holy woman. That means there is a lifestyle. If they talk about an exemplary lifestyle, that simply means there is a lifestyle a woman that is called a woman of God should live to display a character that will show to people that you are a woman of God, you are a child of God, you are a born again Christian. Amen? If there is an exemplary life, you should ask yourself, there which kind of life how will I need to follow? Which way they, you know women need to dress? Which way women need to live their life so that I will be a holy woman of God? And that life is the life of holiness. 
If you want to be a holy child of God, a holy daughter of God, a holy woman of God, a holy son of God, which I will call son, I mean man or holy child of God, you want to make it to heaven. The one thing, the one kind of life you need to pray for and practice and live is holiness. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Everything we are doing in this world, if we are not holy, no heaven for you. You will not make heaven. Don't allow any pastor or your mind or your dream, because some people say I hear voices. God will tell me, don't bother, you are safe. If you know that voice is telling you to continue in sin, or you know yourself, because there is a witness in every man, which is the Holy Spirit, that will witness to you. When you say a thing that is not good, something in your mind will tell you that you know you lie. You know this story you tell is not true. You know the way you are doing it. So even your dressing, that's why some people used to say, Mommy, be talking to women. Tell them, see these people. I say, listen, we have said it, but you have some people that have their own God they worship. Because if you worship the God I worship, which is Jesus Christ, he will have told you and he has said to us that we should not dress some certain way. So if some women still are dressing that way, they cannot make me to be angry. It's not me that sent myself. You understand? So there is a spirit in you that will be telling you, sister, this dress is not good. This thing is not good. It's happened to every human being because God is not a partial God. To say, God, you tell this one, you say to this one, why, why you did not rebuke me? Every human being have the Holy Spirit. Even the Muslims, even the pagans, there is something in you that when you do something or you say something that is not true, in the corner, you yourself will say, ha ha, hey, my mind told me not to say this thing. No, that is, that is God was telling you. But God will not tell you to say a lie. Hallelujah. So that's why the Bible says the secret thing belongs to God. There is no hidden place. Because even in your heart, when you are trying to lie, God knows what is in your mind. So for you to be a holy woman of God or a holy child of God that wants to see Jesus in heaven, how many of us want to see Jesus? You see, everybody, if Muslims are here now, they will even raise up their mother knows. Pagans, witch, witchcraft, all these people, they will even be waving their hand. Everybody wants to see Jesus, wants to be in heaven. Hallelujah. But God has made it clearly in the Bible. And the Bible says, God said in his word, I honor my word more than my name. So you that you are busy, Jesus, you are binding Jesus, you don't give attention to the word. You don't allow the word to play in your life. You are only calling Jesus in vain. That's why the Bible says, this one collects me with their mouth and their heart is far away from me. So you are just busy because you have some denominations or churches that some of you attend. It's just about prayer, binding, fasting, prayer, binding. You are just busy. Go to the mountain, come now, seven days fasting. All these things are services. You are giving, render service to the Lord. What we take it to heaven is holiness. Hallelujah. The Bible did not tell us that prayer will take you to heaven. The Bible did not say that riches will take you to heaven. The Bible did not say prophecy, gift, dreams will take you to heaven. Hallelujah. These are gifts God will give to us to help the work of God, to help you and I. But to go to heaven and make it clearly, this is a recommendation to heaven. You must be holy. Hallelujah. And if you are not holy, you are not going to heaven. So today, we are going to spell holiness and see what is the meaning of holiness. We are examining our lives. Hallelujah. Examining your life. Examine yourself if you are a holy woman. Examine yourself. And this word is even going to preach to me too. We are going, it's good to be examining yourself all the time. I told some people, I say. Some people just run this road with us. Sometimes you check yourself. I say, God, am I still right? What did I do today? My life is it okay. Now we are getting end of the year. It's good for you to go for retreats for yourself. Just ask God, God, have I run the race in 2024 in vain? If I die now, will I go to heaven? God, tell me where I am. Where was my mistake in January to now we are going to December? If you continue like this, I'm telling you, the Bible says seek and they shall find. You understand? Ask and they shall receive. If you continue to ask for perfection, ask for God to reveal your state, I'm telling you, you will not make mistake in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, the beauty of holiness. Holiness is the beauty of believer. It's the beauty of Christians. It is not talking about the, art, the, the makeup beauty. No. 
That is where many Christians have got it wrong. You think that when they say you are beautiful, you must put lipstick. You must put eyelash. You must put jewelry. You must put attachment. You know, or you must look bleach your skin. Those kind, of, those kind of people that are dressing like that, and if they are telling you are beautiful, these are carnal people. For us that are children of God, when I see things like this on your body, or I see somebody is doing this kind of thing, in my heart I will like God. Like when we are traveling, you see in the plane or in the airport, you see women making long hair, false nails. You see people, I will just see that and say, God, how will I say things that these people will believe? What will make these people eye to be open? And this is not the beauty you are talking about. And sometimes he will speak to my mind and say, many are called for you are choosing. What I'm showing you, many have gone already. But you, you will not be gone in Jesus' name. The Lord will win your soul today in Jesus' name. And I'm not only talking to new people that are here. I'm even speaking to our members because <laughs> he that thinketh is done, take it, lest his fall. It's not what the Bible says. So please, I am talking to you, members of Holy Motu. Amen. Today you are examining your life if you are with God. If truly what you are saying you are, ah, I am a holy woman of God. It is not only by our dressing. Holiness is in and out. Hallelujah. There are some people, the holiness outside is 100%. They dress very well. But the holiness inside is zero. They have anger. They have envy, jealousy. Some of them are even a witch. Witch is wizard. Some are evil. They drink blood. Some of them are wicked, but you see them outside, they dress very well. And then you have some kind of people that outside is very filthy and dirty. All they are costing is on their body. But you have some sinners. You have some people inside their hearts, they fear God. Isn't it so? Some people in other churches that we say, oh, these people are not only... If you check them in their heart, they fear God. They love God. They are worshiping God. They struggle to serve God. But when you check them outside, they are not holy. Amen? So I'm talking to two kind of people here today the holiness people and the non-holiness people for we to examine ourselves in jesus name jesus said if you are holy if you give yourself to him you will enjoy one honor and respect holiness is a gift holiness is a prize holiness is a blessing when you are holy i'm telling you anywhere you go people will respect you even when they are treating people anyhow, something happened when I was going to Dubai, I think 2013, I was going to preach there. The way I dressed, you know, sometimes when you dress with long gown, these Muslim people think you are a Muslim. So I went to some business people in the play, I think Igbo women, they are going to buy. The way they were handling them, the way they were talking to them, because I don't know, they don't believe Nigerians. You know, Nigerians have a bad name in the world. That when they say Nigerians, they treat people, they treat Nigerians very bad. And we are praying that God should take away this reproach on us in Jesus' name. When you travel, you will know the way they handle Nigerians. They don't believe nobody in Nigeria is righteous. So when you give your Nigerian passports, they look down on you. You will be ashamed. So the way they were handling them, pushing them one side, this, that. But when the Arab man came to me, he just do his hand like this, like, good, and tell me to go. But I know it is the favor of God. It's because I am holy. I am serving a holy God. He will make a way for me. The act is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Amen. And the Bible says, I will not forsake the righteous. Anywhere you are, I will be with you. So that's why I'm welcoming you to this life I'm going to tell you about. Holiness is the way of life. All this suffering that is going on in the world, not only Nigeria, starvation, hardship. I want to tell you, if I give my to some of our brethren that are genuine children of God, that will testify, they will tell you they are feeling it, no more, not hot. Is it not so? Because every time the Lord will make a table before us. The Lord will cause people to bless us. You will go to the market, favor will follow you. Amen? God will make a child of God will not cry. Even when the wall is hard, children of God are blessed. Go to the conference coming in December. You will be surprised to see people eat three times a day. It is not magic. We are not doing any evil. But because we say, God, you must feed us in this conference. You told us that we should be before you four times in the year, three times in the year. And we cannot stop this conference because of poverty. You are a rich God. The art is the Lord. Even if you cause the president to release money, he can do it. And we have faith. And you will see conference will come. People will go there, eat, sleep, and thank God, and their life will be saved. That is what God wants you to know. Holiness, it is not a hard thing. 
I have been like that those days that when people approach me like deeper life people, they will come to preach to us. We, we look at their dressing immediately. I will hide them out and say, who wants to be like them? Kai, God forbid. So when they come and say, if this is the only way to go to heaven, me, I don't believe I should pull your ring. I should wear holy long cloth that will be sweeping the ground. I should look. No, I don't want it. So let me tell you, if Satan has deceived many people in the world, making that holiness is a burden. Holiness, you cannot enjoy your life. You, in fact, you are like a slave in the world. That is the mentality some of you have. But I want to tell you, holiness is a stress-free. Stress-free. No, no problem from the hard side of the world. I know I was spending money in buying jewelry, attachment, following fashion, running behind fashion. If we come to a congregation like this, maybe one of my friends launched the latest we've on, I will sit down there and begin to think, how will I get this one? He wants to show us that she's the only person that have we've on. Me too, I must have Brasilia. And I don't have the money, but I will now begin to calculate how we begin to find sinners, boyfriend, begin to find lie, how to give to people, just to get that thing. You will not have peace. Stress in sin, but come to holiness, give your life to Jesus, and live a holy life. You will be stress free, you will be protected, you will be protected with, by God. God will help you. I am just telling you what the benefit of holiness. Now we are going to examine ourselves. When you are a holy woman of God, a holy child of God, if you don't have all these benefits, because holiness comes with benefit, you'll be stress free, you'll be honored, you'll be blessed, you'll be protected. Not that persecution, trial, sickness will not come away, but they will not cast you down. Because when you call on your father, he will arise for you. Hallelujah. So now examine yourself. Say, ah, Mommy Linda is saying that all these things are the benefit. But me, I'm a holy woman. I've given my life to Christ. But see, problem, I am still lying. I still compromise for my living. I still have anger. I still fornicate. I still commit adultery. In fact, I still lost. So women lost more than men. They lost after men. Why all these things happen? I still pass through satanic attack. I have prayed, 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 no answer. What is making this devil to overpower me? Now you need to examine your life. Because God is not a halfway God. You have to get God in fullness. You cannot serve God in the church you are holy. A brother was telling me they went for evangelism until some days ago. The way they went for the program, I saw one of our members there. The way she saw the sister dress, she said, ah, sister, why do you dress like this? You are the one to represent God here, and even the movement here, that what we are telling people is to see the, he said, hey, I didn't know you people are coming. <laughs> so it's, <laughs> I am telling you, this is what some people are doing. Thinking that religion is for man, is for the church, is to please the church. Religion, holy living is for yourself and with God. One thing you should know that anywhere in this world God is, you should be holy. I used to tell people, in your bathroom, God is there. Do you understand? Don't say God is holy in the church. That is the mentality of sinners. I live that life. When we are in church, if you are even talking, I say, hey, don't distract me, don't distract me. We are in the presence of God. Hey, don't talk this funny talk. Don't show me this naked picture. We are in God. We have the fear when we are in the church. But as soon as we go outside, Hey, that thing we are telling me, you will defy yourself, enjoy yourself in sin. The mentality is that God is in the house of God. After we leave the church, God is not there. Somebody was disciplined in Horimo. During the wedding, the girl tied her head. In Horimo, during our wedding, our sister should tie their head until they enter their hotel or their matrimonial bed or room. But she, she was in the church, she tied her head. As soon as they went to reception, Reception, she removed her tie and they were dancing and playing. And then they were asking them. He said, eh, I was, eh, since, eh, we were just confused. And they asked the mother, where were you dancing, playing this? He said, actually, people have mocked her. She said to God, she told God a year back and said, God, if you make my children to marry, that day you will have, you will have mercy on me. I will really dance for my enemy. Oh. And she commits sin. She agreed that she commits sin in the wedding. She do things that she don't want to do. But you can see these are not holy people. Holiness is 360 degrees. All around your life. Anywhere you are. 
even among the lions then we are persecutors are surrounding you among your family members that don't know god they are pursuing you they are attacking you with words they are giving you command in the office we are sinners are everywhere mocking you you should not let go you should hold on to christ but many of you your holiness is not deeper hallelujah so we need to know by your life they say a lifestyle a exemplary lifestyle that will tell you that there is a particular lifestyle you should live that will make people to know you are a child of God. Did Elisha said anything to that woman that I am a man of God in 2 Kings chapter 4? Let's see it. Did Elisha say anything to that woman before the woman told your husband that ah, I perceive this is a man of God? Let's see. There are people that are looking at you. You don't need to be advertising yourself. I'm a woman of God. I'm a child of God. I'm a this. Hallelujah. Your lifestyle, your behavior, your attitude among your brethren. People behind your back will say, this person is genuine. When they are looking for trustworthy person to make a leader in the church, to give a treasurer, everybody behind will say, I trust that sister. She has the fear of God. I trust that pastor. He can rule the church very well. But some of you, you think it's by political or by your sinful struggle. You are not born again. Just get this holiness. When you have holiness, your way will be clear for you. Everything you want in this world will be at your back and call. God will make a way. Even among sinners, God will make a way for you. Hallelujah. Second Kings. Second Kings chapter 4. Let's see something there. Second Kings chapter 4. Let's take verse 8 and see. And it fell on a day that Elisha passed to Shusham, where was a great woman, and she constrained him to eat bread. And so it was that as often as he passed by, he turned in Tida to eat bread. And she said unto her husband, Behold, now I perceive that this is an holy man of God, which passes by us continually. Did Elisha tell her I'm a man of God? What made the woman to say, I perceive? It should have been a lifestyle in, in Elijah. The way he speaks, the way he interacts with them, the way he dress, the way he carries himself. But some of you, your neighbors cannot say you are born again. Your husband, up to today, will say my wife is not born again. Your wife cannot testify that this pastor is born again. Your children are not giving their life to Christ because they still see the same mama we know before. The word of God in your mouth, your family member have not come to Christ because you still display some problems, some anger, some lies, some attitude that they knew with before. But now you say you are born again. So some of them are saying, ah, me, this born again, I don't understand. No, sister is still the same person. You are hindering God in your life. You are hindering your family member not to be delivered. Some of you, you have prayed, fasted, God, change my husband, change my children, change... Go back to God and say, God, what is holding my children? What is making my life? Not to make my children, my husband, my neighbor, my office, where I am. The sinners will see me and say, I need to follow this woman. This woman's life is perfect. This woman can be a good help, a good counselor to my marriage. Because all these people here, they cannot give me good counsel. I need, you are not a friend with her, but she sees your life. This is what the, the woman saw in Elijah. Let us make, you see what holiness will do for you? It will bring favor for you. See, verse 10. Let us make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall, and let us set for him there a bed, and a table, and a stool, and a candlestick, as it shall be, when he cometh to us, that he shall turn in thither. And he fell on a day that he came there thither, and he turned into the chamber and lay there. Can you imagine? Elisha did not tell him that I need a house. But the woman said, let's make a house for this, woman, this man. My husband, I'm perceived this is a holy man of God. Let's make a place for him that any time he's passing by, he don't need to be living in the night or in the evening. Let's just make a place for him that he will sleep, you know, and stay there and feel good. Amen? No time. When you go down there, when Elijah stayed there, he asked his, his, his servant and said, what do you think we should do for this woman? And his family. If you read down, what did, Eli, what did the, the servant told Elisha? I perceive that this woman don't have a child. And this woman would have been crying, spending money, drinking all kinds of herbs, going to all prayer houses. All you need 
is for you to be holy. God has somebody that is blessing is attached to you, but God wants you to be holy. Sometimes I sit down, I cry, I say, God, I thank you for my life. I never knew that many people's salvation was attached to me. Hallelujah. And as I keep on delaying, there's a pastor from Watchman in my country that told me that those days I was a sinner. He told Finna and said, all the prayer you are praying, God should use you, you are blessed. You have your own quality. But I want to tell you, your family will not be saved if Linda is not saved. That was maybe five, six, ten years or seven years before my conversion. This pastor was constantly on me. Sometimes I have to run and say, what is, I'm not your member. Why are you always pursuing me? If you see me from fire, you come down. Linda, give your life to Christ. You are delaying people. I'm telling you. He's there. His name is Pastor Emeka. A watchman pastor now present in, 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 in our country. You can ask him if you know him. He will tell you, you know Linda very well. And he has been the one telling me that God wants to use you. I have some terrible dreams. I will tell him rapture will take place. He will tell me, this is this, this is this. There's a one dream I told him. I had a dream. Rapture took place. It was Christmas time. We are buying things for Christmas. And then the rain started falling. People were tearing into pieces. I was running. And then I entered a church. And then the, the, the rain was not coming there. I saw Jesus life in the, in the dream. I was calling him. And my people in my country was going, Jesus save us. Then he looked at them like that. I said, so you people know me. You know me. You don't know me. Follow the people you have been following. I'm pointed at some pastors. I woke up. I told him. I was frightened. When I woke up, I told the pastor, I said, Pastor, this is what I had, this dream I had. He now told me that you will be saved before the rapture. That was those 20, maybe 2000 and something like that. He told me clearly that you, you will be saved before the rapture. And when I have my encounter, he told me that you are going to pass through persecution, through trial, hard, you know, suffering for this gospel because you delay the hand of God upon your life. So it's like your calling is going to be poor. So when persecution is everywhere on the internet, on Selena calling me names, snake this, sometimes I want to break and then I'll remember that this man of God told me this. And I know this is my penalty. This is my suffering. Hallelujah. For Christ. So you are waiting. You are sitting here. You are not holy yet. Your children cannot be born again yet because you are holding them. They need to see the life of God in you before they will change. Your husband is not believing in holiness. He's not believing in Christ. You are the one to change him. You are the helpmate for your husband. You are still seeing deficiency in your husband. You are still seeing problem in your family. God wants to make you the pillar. But as long as you are not holy, you cannot move mountain. You need to be holy. Hallelujah. You need to be holy. You can see what holiness will do for you. I, don't, I want to remove that fear in your mind that holiness is poverty. Holiness is smelly life. Holiness, you will not dress good. Holiness, you are looking shabby. Holy, if people are the one doing like this, let me tell you, there are some people I believe that they are witches and wizards. So some people dress somehow to discourage you. That is what I believe. And I was telling that the I said some people in deeper life, the way they were dressing, preaching this gospel, they hinder some of us not to believe because when we look at them, looking so tattered. Holiness is decency, it's cleanliness. It's not so dress very well and go and preach to that person. Let the person look at you know that there is no way you can condemn this person. Not poverty that is doing this person. Or this person is looking as if he's begging for bread. But what made this person to go out in the day because of the love of God? And why will I not give my life to Christ? Hallelujah. So, sometimes some people dress, some people bring some laws to hinder you. Some people say, ah, me, this is holiness, I will not give my life to Christ. They are doing it purposely. But I want to tell you that I've had in your heart not to believe in Christ and not to be a holy child of God. You are doing yourself. Because without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Amen. In the book of Matthew chapter 20, Matthew 27 verse 18, you will see the life that Jesus suffered just because of holiness. Just because of holiness. Matthew chapter 27. Why? Jesus suffered just because, because there was no sin found in him. Matthew 27 verse 18. For he knew that for envy they have delivered him. They know Herod know that because the judgment coming on Jesus today, Pilate, he knew in his heart that this, this religious leader, this Pharisee side of say, they are only declining to kill Jesus, only say they should kill him because of envy. They cannot see any unrighteousness in him. It's because of envy that he knew that they want to deliver him up. Nothing they can find in him. 
they set Jesus up, but he, they cannot find any sin in him. That's why if you say you are a child of God, why will people still see some sin in you? And you are not praying about that, and you are not bothered about that. Instead, you change church to church. When they rebuke you and they discipline you, you move to another church. My dear, you will move and then land one day hell. That is where you are heading to. Hallelujah. Now, we are going holiness. Holiness, the benefit of holiness. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Holiness. What did Jesus talk about holiness there? What do we know? What do we need to know about holiness? Holiness. Hebrews 12, 14. Hallelujah. Hebrews 12, 14. It says, Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Follow peace with all men. Are you with peace with everybody in the world? Are you with peace with your husband people? Your husband's sister, your husband's brother, your mother-in-law, even your husband himself? Are you with peace with your church members? Are you with peace with all the sisters in the movement, with all the overseers, the leaders? Are you with peace with the workers as a leader? Are you with peace? Are you with peace with your neighbor? Even when you know that these neighbors, they don't like me. But you, the Bible says, follow peace. Have you made effort to make peace with that person? Hallelujah. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Are you truly holy? Now we are going to the spelling of holiness. Are you truly holy? If you are holy, then you are doing all these things I'm going to say. But if you have deficiency, you lack one of it. Don't forget the Bible says if you are fall short of one, you see one, you are fall short of all. If you are a sinner in one, all is, you have to be 100%. If you are 99, no heaven. Now, we will spell holiness. H-O-L-I-N-E-S-S. Holiness. The first letter H is humility. The first letter A, H is humility. Without humility, you cannot see the Lord. You, are, you don't have the spirit of humility. You are not the kind of person that you take nonsense. Some people say, I don't take nonsense. Yes, it's good. From the devil, don't take nonsense. But among your brethren, you have to tolerate for heaven's sake. You cannot defend yourself all the time. Sometimes you bear it. Hallelujah. Without humility, you cannot see the Lord. Know this today and know it very well. Philippians chapter 2. If you don't have humility in your life, you don't have the spirit of humility, you cannot see the Lord. Humility is holiness. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 11. Let's read. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, though it's not robbery to be equal with God, but made him make himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in a likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and become obedient unto God, even the death on the, of the cross. Dying on the cross, let me stop there for we are continue, was the most humiliating and painful way to die. Dying on the cross, the disgracing, open dead, they naked him like that. Jesus chose to humble himself, even to die on the cross. He knew it was the only way to save us and bring glory to the Father. He chose that part of death. Let them disgrace me, humiliate me, no problem. But because Jesus knows something is inside this humility, Something that is a reward package in the heart of a people that are having the spirit of humility. If I humble myself and I will become obedient to God, anyhow he choose to disgrace me, no problem. Because that time God has taken the, the, man, the flesh of man, he was a man now. So he decided to do this thing. Wherefore God, see verse 9, wherefore God also has highly exalted him and give him a name which is above every name if you have humility in you people think you are a fool people think you don't know anything i'm telling you god is going to honor you god will honor you above other people in the church in your family 
Everything God will do for you, but you need that spirit of humility. So if you call yourself a woman of God or a child of God, a holy woman, and you don't have the spirit of humility, I want to tell you, thank God you did not die because heaven was not for you. You're only tying your hair, only dressing. Or you call yourself a Christian. You go to church every Sunday, Bible study, prayer, meeting, all. But you don't have the spirit of humility. You are not soft. You are not gentle. You are not, you are not, you are not broken down. You are not cast down. You are high-minded. You are harsh. You don't have the spirit of humility. You don't have the spirit of humility. And you will not have made it to heaven. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the sea and that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Why? What gave him that honor, that reward? Because he humiliated himself. He humbled himself. He bring himself down to be humiliated. They disgraced him painfully. But Jesus was humble. Are you humble in the spirit of God? Are you humble in the house of God? Are you humble to your leaders? Are you humble to your members? Are you humble to your husband, to your wives? Are you humble to your parents? Are you humble to the society, to your boss? Are you, or are you are that kind of cheeky child of God? I don't listen to sinners. I don't talk to my husband. He's not born again. You talk anyhow. My dear, humility is not in you. I don't talk to my wife. What did she know? I don't, you are, you are too high. You have high mind in it. You have anger. You are haughty. That is not the spirit of Christ. That is not the spirit of Christ. Then you are not a holy woman. You have to come to this point of having the spirit of humility. Then you will be called a child of God. Then you can raise up your hand and say, let any man bring down my hand if there is any sin or whatever I've done here. But now some people cannot even say before a crowd of people that I am holy. So people cannot say they are holy in their neighborhood because you borrow, you don't pay back. You lie to people. What you say, you cannot do it. You promise somebody, you will not do it. You remember, you see the person, for you to say, oh, you dodge. This is not holiness. You can forget, yes. But when you see the person, make peace, try. Hallelujah. But that is it. If you don't have humility, that is the first letter of holiness. H is humility. Then we go to First Peter chapter 5. Verse 5 to 6. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourself unto the elder. Ye, all of you, be subject one to another. And be clothed with what? With what? We don't have Bible here. First Peter chapter 5. Verse 5. Please learn to open your Bible. Don't just be listening to the, the, the preacher. So that you can know scripture for yourself and you take it. So that you study it later. First Peter chapter 5, verse 5 says, Likewise, ye younger, submit yourself unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with what? For God resisted the and giveth grace to thee. Verse 6, humble yourself before under the mighty hand of God, that he may what? Exalt you in due. You see the blessing of humility? The blessing of humble spirit, when you have the spirit of humility, God will exalt you. In due time, people will know that you are a child of God. You don't need to sing it. You don't need to cry. You don't need to fight for yourself in internet, whatever they say about you. You don't need to go there and defend yourself. As due time. Those days I had the story of the Kumui that when he was a lecturer, they came across him one time as I had that he was coming back from lecturing home, that some women that give their life to Christ, believing in his teaching, they came across him and beat him. He was unconscious. They say he's the one that turned, his, turned their wife into a vampire. They persecuted that they come greatly. Deeper life was persecuted. Isn't it so? Some of you had the story. But today, where will he go to that those people will not bow for him? In fact, people that were saying he's, he's preaching, and uh, he's, he's bringing blood, uh, as daddy was telling me, deeper life was persecuted. They never believed the doctrine of that they come in. They were like, he's too extreme. He's this, he's that. But today, wherever our father in the Lord is going, eh? even sinners, because in due time, God has shown them that this thing he was preaching is the true gospel. Hallelujah. So when things used to happen to that they call like that, I say, don't be cast down. Learn from deeper life. In due time, people will know that hurry more is the act of our generation. People will know that you are a child of God and you are preaching the truth. Witches and wizards themselves will be telling people if you want to be saved, 
go to that ministry because over there they are disgracing us. We don't we like it or not, we have to force ourselves to give our life to Christ. Hallelujah. So in due time, this your humility spirit, this your humble life, your peaceful life with people will make a way for you. Your husband is maltreating you, cast you away for Christ, be peaceful. Keep on following God. One day he will come to know that the second wife he carry <laughs> is Jezebel, that you were Sarah. He will go back for you. Hallelujah. So all God wants you to have is a spirit of humility. Holiness is humility. Without humility, you shall not see the Lord. You shall never enter heaven. Because if you don't have the spirit of humility, you cannot go to heaven. Heaven is people that are humble to God, humble, loving, peaceful. We don't want, the God don't want anybody that wants to scatter that place. So make sure you are holy. Psalm chapter, Psalm 138 verse 8. Let's read Psalm 138. Let's see there very fast. So please, you need to have this spirit in you. Have this spirit in you. Cry for the spirit of humility. God, give me the spirit of humility. Give me the spirit. Verse 6. Though the Lord be high, yet has he respect unto the lowly. lowly. But the proud, he knoweth afar off. You see? Though the Lord be high, he has he respect unto. The, God has a respect for people that are lowly. People that bring themselves down. He said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. But there are some preachers today in the world. There are some women and men that say they are women of God. I'm a prophet, I'm a prophet. They carry themselves more than God. Make people to worship them. You cannot bring God. You have to come down. Let God be seen. Hallelujah. So, you will see proudfulness, haughty spirit, envious all this bad spirit in you will never give you the spirit of humility because humility is of God. You will be holy. If you have this haughty spirit, anger, harsh, know that you don't have the spirit of humility. You have to start praying for it. God, give me the spirit of humility. A humble spirit, a gentle spirit, a peaceful spirit. Hallelujah. So be ticking as we are going, be ticking. Where you know you fall short of it, you need to rededicate your life again and say, God, the Lord, the power of holiness, the spelling of holiness, the meaning of every letter in holiness should dwell in me in Jesus' name. The next letter was O. O is obedient. Obedience. Without which, say it for me. Without obedience, no man shall see. Holiness is obedient to God's word. Hallelujah. If you are not obeying the word of God, no holy, no heaven for you. You will not enter heaven. Because some of you, you are good of, I don't believe this one. May I take this one? They say, plate your hair. You still don't plate your hair. And you want to go to heaven. You are a disobedient child. You are a disobedient child. Don't wear tight things that will show your figure. You still show if I'm not married yet. I don't want to wear this one that can wear big, big clothes. Then they are married. How can somebody? That's why you, you marry the man and then you begin to cry and say, I regret it. Because you find a man for yourself. Allow God to look for a man for you. All you do, obey God. Even if you wear a, a, a big cloth, God will tell a man, this is your wife. But you don't obey God. Remove jewelry. Women say, No. I don't believe that gospel. In fact, I'm not in their church. Oh. I'm in this other church. I'm in this other church. A, a woman asked daddy a question. Daddy, if my husband is saying, God so should submit to my husband. And my husband is saying, if I don't put my wedding ring and my hearing, eh, it will send me out of the house. If I disobey my husband, am I not seeing in that scripture that so we should submit? Daddy look at her and say, eh. okay, now let me to ask you this question. If you are in the house, and they say, Boko Haram is coming, Boko Haram is coming, run, run, run. And your husband said, don't go anywhere, we'll die together. Sit here. Will you sit? He said, mm, daddy, I will run. Oh, daddy said, hey, you will run. Because you are seeing life death. Let me tell you, dwelling is the death after you have lived this war. God will going to kill your soul, your spirit in hell for putting dwelling on your body. So if you know it, you will tell your husband, I don't want to die after death. I don't want to go and face God's judgment. God has told us that this is an accosting 
take it away from your body. So you will tell your husband, I love you, but my soul, if I die now, you can never see my spirit. Have you ever seen spirit? You'll be talking, my husband, if you are hearing me, my wife, if you are hearing me, please. You don't see them again because they have died. But God sees the soul and the spirit, and he said, I'm going to kill that soul, destroy it in hellfire. You'll be burning and crying, and your husband will be on earth, enjoying life, married another woman. And you, you disobey God. Now, if you have not had today, earring, dwelling, attachment, makeup, lipstick, trousers for women, are abomination on the child body, on the woman body, on the, a woman, a Christian woman, on a woman in the world, anybody that wants to make heaven will not go to heaven with those things on your body. You die with them on your body, your body has been defied, your soul is defied before God. You are smelling. It's like shit is on your body, but you are not aware. When you are passing flies, so where are these flies coming from? But there is a stain on your body. And that is how your soul, your spirit have been stained with jewelry on your body. You can see you don't want to leave them. Why? They are having a power. Most people that are confessing, marrying people, I wish on witches will confess openly and tell you these are the property of the sea. Satan is sending them to defile you. You think it's beauty. Without eyelash, without makeup, without lipstick. If I don't do my hair, my husband will throw me away. See these girls, whether they package themselves, my husband is following them. Are you looking for that beauty? Is that the beauty? I told one of my friends, your husband can never be faithful to you. Say, Linda, why are you saying this? And I say, yes. Because the beauty you have shown to your husband is the outward beauty, makeup, lipstick. There are some women that know how to paint more than you. When your husband come across them, you say, my wife don't know how to paint. I like this one. You believe by packaging your breast for your husband to be seen. There is a woman that has breasts more than you. But the beauty is the inner man. Your character, your lifestyle, your behavior, that he had to have a woman that will submit to a husband. In this, our generation, women not they submit like that. They will scold their husband blow for blow. So when the husband come across a holy woman, submissive woman, respectful woman, he will know that, God, I thank you, I have peace in my house. When others are fighting, these brothers are fighting with their wife, he will be telling them, that, ah, God, I thank you, my wife is very peaceful. That is what you need. As a wife, you want your husband not to look at another woman, not to send you away, not to disband you. Just be holy and righteous. Obedience to the word of God. First John, John chapter 14. Obeying the word of God. John chapter 14. If you don't obey God, you don't obey his word. Wife, submit to your husband. <laughs> you will always have problem. Pray for the spirit because Satan will always want to hinder that submission in your life. He don't want you to do it. Wife, submit. F John chapter 14. Verse 21. He that has my commandment and keepeth them, he is he that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be love of my father. And I will love him, and I will manifest myself to him. Judas said unto him, not his carrier, Lord, how is he that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us, and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, if a man love me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him, and he will come unto him, and make an abode with him. He that loveth me, not he that loveth me, not keepeth not my saying. He that loveth me, not keepeth not my sayings. And the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father which sent me. If you are not keeping the word of God, all this one you are saying, I love you, Jesus. Jesus is my Lord. If I ask you now, how many of you are for Jesus, you raise up your hand. I will die for Jesus. I will love Jesus. Yes, everybody loves Jesus. Everybody loves, even some pagans, some Muslims will tell you that, yes, we love Jesus, we believe him, we respect him. But because they don't obey the word of God, God said, trust in me, put your faith in me, believe me, me, I am your savior. Muslims say, no, we will not obey that word. That's why they are cursed, they are banned. You now, you say, I believe in Jesus, but you are saving the word. You will take A, you will not take B. You will take C, you will leave D. Teaching them to observe what? All things. That's why some denominations are doomed. Some pastor tell you, God only coming for holiness. God only coming for, for prosperity preaching. So you, it's only one food you have been eating. Rice. White rice. And the other ones are eating stew, only stew. Others are eating only potato. You cannot be satisfied. You cannot make heaven. You need to eat complete food. 
which is God say, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And he hear him say here, yeah, he that love me will keep my commandment because my words are not mine. It's for my father, the heavenly father, the maker of heaven and heart. The one that make you, that breathes life in, in your life. The one that will say today you wake up, tomorrow you will die. Nobody, no doctor, no riches, no juju, no witchcraft, no Satan will stop you when God say you will die today. But you are disobeying God. God said, women, hold, be holy. Women, don't wear trousers. Women, submit. Women, be pure. You say, no, I don't believe. I'm not a member of that. You are still carrying their custody. You still have anger in your life. You still deceive people. I am a holy woman. I am leading praise and worship. I'm a pastor wife. I'm a unit leader. I'm a chapter leader. I'm a sister in the church. We are holiness of our movement. By your dressing, you have condemned. You just believe that you are righteous. But lying is still in your mouth. Gossip. You call one another. They did CUG. I told myself, I said, ha, this CUG, some people will use it for good, some will use it for gossip, since they don't pay too much again. Have you heard? Hey, this is what they say. Oh, oh, oh. in the night, for them to pray and fast, they will be keeping all night in gossip. And in the morning, they tie their ego for chapter meeting. Who are you deceiving? You are not a holy woman. You are not. That's why Satan is toasting you through and through. That's why different problems is coming your way. You will ask yourself, ah, ah, from one problem to another. God is not a liar. He said, I will not forsake the righteous. Why every time you are inside a problem and you cannot come out, check your life. What attracts God to you is holy life, is holy living. What will make God to arise? Arise, O oh Lord, let your enemy be scattered. What will make you to, whatever will burn on her shall be burned in heaven. What will make you command the holy God, the holy heaven, to make him arise, to make angels come to your head? It's when a righteous child call. How can a sinner move a holy crown? How can a sinner say, Angel Michael, move now? He will look at you, you can call me, go where for you. God will not even answer you because your hand is stained with blood. He said, lift up holy hands. Check your life. Why your condition is like that? Why you are failing? Why others are progressing? Why others are maintaining holiness? But you, every time you confess sin, I have seen, pastor, all the time you are in discipline. Why? You say, I don't know my own life. It's because you have not decided to be completely holy. You have not made up your mind yet. Let's keep on going. You will see. Amen. So you see what Jesus said here. If that have my commandment and keep it them, he is he that loveth me. So if you truly love Jesus, I know you love Jesus, but you have not loved him yet. Obey him. Obedience is holiness. First John chapter 2. If you don't obey God, you don't obey his word, you will not make heaven know. Know it today and don't say, ah, these people are just frightening us. We shall see on that beautiful show, the day of judgment. If you continue this life of hardened heart, stubbornness, you don't want to drop sin, you don't want to confess your sin, you don't want to confess your witchcraft. A witch cannot serve God. You are only delaying, you are only deceiving yourself. You cannot go to heaven. And if you think that, oh, I don't care to go to that day of heaven, you will regret it. God is going to break you in the lake of fire. You will cry because nobody can try God. Even Satan will cry. The judgment will come. God will judge evil. He will judge sinners in a way that they will painfully feel it. And it's there. Read the book of Revelation, you know. So now, 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2, verse 5. But whosoever keepeth his word, but whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. Amen. Verse 6. He that saith it abideth in him ought himself also to walk, even as he walked. If you say you are for Christ, walk as our Christ walk. If you say you love the Lord in perfect way, God will dwell in you. But if you don't keep the work of God, you don't keep the word of God, you don't obey it, you don't do what they say to you, you are not going to heaven. Because you lack obedience. You don't obey the leadership. You don't obey the church authority. You don't obey your husband. You don't obey your wife. If your husband should obey wife, don't say because you are wife. No. God passed through everybody. God passed through donkey. You see, your wife is not a human being, more precious, more superior and being than any other thing. God can pass through your children. Sometimes your child will be telling you, don't say, eh, this is my child. What will listen carefully god this thing that my daughter my son is sending me you see you that want me to do like they obey them obey your family members 
Obedience to the truth, not fake, not lie. Not somebody will tell you, go and steal. You say, I obey. My mother says, she'll go and steal. You obey. God says, she'll obey my parents. Go and buy me a cigarette. That is not obedience. Obey in holiness, which is you will not obey in sin. Obey in righteousness. Obey things that are good in the sight of God. Obey your husband. Obey your wife. Obey the church authority, even if he had. Sister, you have done it. You are in discipline. It's pain in you, but obey. Take that discipline in good order. Even if they cast you out of the church, seek to come back, pray and say, God, please, I'm sorry. God will forgive and open his arm. You are a podcast on you, will but pride. You are very proud. I cannot tell you, is it the only church? I will go to the other side. You don't obey the word of God. You don't obey church authority. You don't obey. God say, be holy. You are not holy. You lie. You still steal. You still fornicate. You still watch pornography. You still masturbate. Which heaven are you thinking you are going you think it's by running up and down. You say, God, no, I'm suffering in the house of God. But in the night, you masturbate. You look pornography. You, you commit fornication, adultery. You have boyfriend. You have another girlfriend outside. Your wife is lying that you are outside. You think that you are stealing in the office. You are taking bribe, giving bribe. You say you are a child of God. You are not obeying the word of God. You are not. Luke chapter 22. You are not. Luke chapter 22. You are not obeying God. And if you don't obey God, you are not going to heaven. The ones that love God, they will keep his commandment. You have to be praying always, God, make me to keep your commandment. Luke 22, verse 42. Luke 22, 42, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy be done. That is Jesus. If it's for me, this cup is too heavy. I'm going to face death. Nobody can smile going to death. Ah, oh God, this thing is heavy, but it is not my will. It is your will. God, I love makeup. I love this thing. But God, you say it is a sin. I give it all for you. God, this is my husband. I love him so much. But it has come to, to the light that is, I'm a second wife. I have so many children. Ah, where will I go to? God, but you say... A divorcee should not remarry. Father, I am sacrificing this home. I will go and start my new life. As a second wife, I leave this house. This is people that are obeying God. These are Christians that want to make heaven. God, you say that this church, we are not pleasing you. We should change everything we are doing here into holiness preaching. And I know if I started preaching holiness, all my members that I have 2,000, they will go maybe now only 50 can remain. But God, not my will, thy will be done. As long as you will give me members that will believe the holiness and will make heaven, let the thousand go and let fifty stay. You will see God manifesting. But some of you, you will say, ha, ah, this message, if I preach it, everybody will leave the church. Where will I have tithe and offering? Where will I have money to do this? How can I live a holy life? People have known me to preach like this. If I change it now, you are just doing yourself. You are not going anywhere. You will gain this wall and then lose your soul. What shall it profit you, my dear, to gain the big congregation, to gain crowd of people, to gain marriage, to gain child, to gain education and lose your soul? Please think it. The most important thing in life is making heaven. Hallelujah. It's going to heaven. Lastly, when you obey God, see what the benefit of obedience to the word of God will do for you. Jeremiah chapter 7. When you obey God, you will see what God will do for you. You are not obeying a dead God. You are not obeying a blind God. You are not obeying a, a immortal. He's a God of movement. He's a God that is alive. He's a God that is alive and is alive forevermore. Some people worship stone. That's why you don't see the blessing of God. You only imagine, you only assume. Satan is only dealing on, your, on deception. But those that serve the living God, you will see. Jeremiah chapter 7 verse 23 Verse 23, but this thing commanded I then, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and ye shall be my people, and walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well unto you. God will bless you if you obey his voice. That is what he told the children of God, children of Israel. If you obey me, I will be your God. My sister, my brethren, if God be your God, who will be against you? Nobody will stand. You are afraid of witches. You are afraid of Satan. You are afraid of witch doctor. Hey, this neighbor woman, they say, this is my neighbor. He's a witch. I don't want problem or close my window. 
Hey, you don't know the God you serve. The God that said the earth is my full stool. They say one of the stars, scientists that are saying, is bigger than the earth. Until we die, none of us can tell the whole earth. One of the stars is bigger than the earth. And the Bible described Jesus in Revelation that in one of his hand in his palm, he carry what? Seven stars. <laughs> is he a small palm? Is that the God you should mess up with? Is that the God you should, when you have God, you'll be afraid of who? Bible says you will eat poison, you will not die. But your juju person will say, take this thing. So that when you eat poison, you know, you have to take something. God said by faith, pray on the food and eat. Nothing will, be a, nothing will hurt you. And that is the God that will tell you, obey me, you will not do. The blessing you are looking for, you want marriage, you want a child, you want promotion, you want love between your husband, you want your ministry to grow, you want to marry, you want your children to have good husband, good wife, you want them to be better, successful in future, you want the good for your life, you want to have your own house, live rent, you want to travel, you want to do the, God, the, world of, the work of God, just obey God. Every morning you wake up, obey the word of God, do the routine as a child of God, Live your life as God directs you. If you say move, let him move. I want to go to the town. Don't go. Sit at home. Sit. I want to go and do this. Don't move here to the city. Sometimes you're looking like, ah, God, why? Just follow. Hallelujah. God can speak to your husband and say, don't do this. Don't do it. It's pain you, but don't do. Hallelujah. That is it. When you obey yourself, obey God's word, you will make it. You will make it. And you will make it to heaven. The other letter is hell. L is love. Without no love. Without which no man shall see the Lord. Without which no man shall. If you don't have love in your Christian life, in your Christian race, in your life, you don't think of entering heaven. You will not make it. If you die in no heaven, if you die later and you still you are not a loving person, even your children are saying a mommy is not loving. Your, your women are saying you are not loving. Your husband is complaining, this is my wife, you don't know love. When I'm talking about love, I'm not talking about sex. I'm talking about attitude, behavior, charity, good works. Your family member is saying, sister, no, that one, you don't know love. Love is in different ways. Love is in giving. Some of you don't give. Your hand is akagom. You don't give. Even the church will be crying, we need this, we need this. You have enough, you cannot give. You cannot give. People come to you, you don't give them. You have it. Your family member are looking for help, you don't give them. People in the church are suffering. You have plenty of clothes, pie. You will be murmuring. Say, look at that lady, all the time, see her cloth. Go to your ward, sanctify your cloth, pray on the cloth, go and dash. Not to, hey, me, I don't give my cloth out and let it don't carry it to the coven. If my cloth enter coven, the explosion that will take place there. Even Queen of the Coast will sum you. Why you bring that kind of cloth here? Hallelujah. So don't allow fear to hinder love in your life. Hallelujah. First John chapter 4. You have to love God. You have to have the spirit of love. If you don't love, you don't have the spirit of love. No. Don't say because I love this person, he offended me, he hurt me, I will not show love again. I told somebody, a sister with me, I told him, I said, most of the people that are persecuting me today, we don't need to talk because what the right hand did, the left hand should not know. But if I tell you what I did for some people, you'll be surprised. I showed them love. Love. Not because of anything. God said we should love her. People, we should love even our enemy. Hallelujah. But if we now say, based on what they are doing to us now, say, me, I will not show love again because all the people that used to do love, they used to turn back and slap me. Some people, your life is like that. Is it not so? Anyone you do love, the, the person will come and slap. It's like love not good for me. Oh. It's like love not fits me. I don't know. Some people love fits. The way they do love, people will remember them. But me, anybody will, don't give up. There is a God that will reward your loving act. Keep on loving. Be an obedient child of God. Keep on loving the house of God. Keep on promoting the things of God. Keep on doing good, good things to people. Hallelujah. First John chapter 4. Let's see there. Verse 7. Don't give up in love. 7 to 11. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. If you say you know God, you don't have love, you don't know God. Some people know how to prophesy, preach. Some people know how to pray, bring down the roof down. Some people know how to sing that you fall in the anointing. Some people know how to organize things, give good suggestions in the house of God. But when it comes to love, they are not lovable. And your work is in vain. In this was manifested in the love of God towards us. 
because that God sent his holy begotten son into the world that we might love that we might live through him hear him love hear in his love not that we love God but that he loved us and sent his son to be the, the propitiation for our sins beloved if God if God so love us we ought also to love one another please let love in the house of God today there are partiality I used to tell my women, some of them are here, I told them, I, what did I used to hear? That there is partiality, there is clique. We don't do clique in the house of God. You don't hug this one. And then when this one comes, hey, well done. I'm no, not in my class. This one's no, I uh, know. You don't do like that. Somebody told me that, ah, mommy, me, I they fear to all go. Sometimes this witch is it. I say, ah, ah, greater is sin that is in me. That he that is in them. When I even hug you, I tension sure will shock you. You that have which will not want to come and hug me. But me, I'm ready to hug because I carry power. The power of Jesus is in me. You don't need to fear Satan. Fear this and then damn the commandment of God. No. Amen. Just be careful. Okay, I cannot hug a husband because he, you know we have to be sensitive here. Yeah. But that will not make you to say, I don't hug my sister. I don't greet my sister. I don't visit this person. I don't do good to this person. No. Do good. Do good to people. Even if God revealed this person to his not clean. There's somebody that told me that when they told the person that mommy Linda is part of the people that know that you're a witch, she was shocked. I said, mommy, you knew. I said, I knew. But if, I know. She was like, nothing was seen. Am I, the, am I God? You are a child. You are God handmade. I'm God handmade. Why will I carry the judgment of God begin to do, do my face? You are an evil person. You're a witch. I'll be angry with you. No. God showed me and said, this person is like, this. be careful. But Bible told us that. Be harmless like dove and be wise like serpent. A child of God, God did not say be like a dove. He said be bold like a lion. A lion don't fear any animal. He will go there even if they book him, he, he will go there. So as a child of God, I don't fear witches and wizards. I only be careful how I deal with people. Hello? So that you will not test, put the Lord that God in test. Don't test the Lord. Don't say, I have God. You will see Juju enter. Sure, I know. But when God lead your spirit and say, do this, do this. Do as how God lead you to. Hallelujah. Don't put fear in your face and then affect God in your life. A brother God sent me to and said, tell that brother that I have been sending many people to him. But his face is very bad. People see him as a bad person. And he's hindering my word in the heart of people. Because people are disobeying and say, God, me, if he's that man, I will not go and tell him. Or me, I will not go there. God, please, that brother is not good. And I went and told the brother, your face, your bad behavior has hindered people not to come and close to you. Not to save you. There are some things in your life that God cannot tell you. You have to tell another person. But if you are up there, you are proud. You are hindering yourself. So let love guide you. Hallelujah. If you don't have love in your heart, you are not born again. You are not holy. Maybe you are born, but you are not sanctified. And you will not go to heaven. Hallelujah. Don't call yourself a holy woman if you don't have love. If your people around you are not saying you are a lovable person. First Peter chapter 4. First Peter chapter 4. If you don't have love. If you don't have love. These are things that every day, child of God, including me here, I pray God. God is not easy. You know it's not easy. God, see what they are saying. God, I don't want my heart to... If I see... I saw one of my persecutors. That is what I would say. The person saw me and then turned the face. I was buying tickets. Daddy sent me and the, uh, the, 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 the secretary to go and buy tickets. We were traveling. So in the, the plaza where we were buying, I saw the brother coming out. As soon as he saw me, he was a member of Foreign Mobile but because they left in some kind of way that they don't like or what, I don't know. So he was angry with me. So he wants to keep malice. So he saw me just bend down his head. I said to mama, I said, me, you cannot malice me. If you, you want to go to help me, I will not go. I will run after you. I follow him. Brother! Brother! <laughs> I don't want to call his name here, but yeah, I call his name. Brother! He turned. I said, how are you? I'm the half family. He asked, you, know, you know, you don't have option. Huh? Where do man? I said, ah, I know. I was talking to daddy, the daddy, and I said, who are you talking? I said, this brother. I said, ah, greeting for me. They said, hey, daddy says you greet. He said, ah, greeting for me. He now left. Since that time, I'm not hearing the brother talking again on the internet. I know something would have come to his mind now. This person we are just hating and see the way they are behaving. It is not me that reveal you. It's God that reveal you in my life. And God says, speak. Why are you angry with me? 
You want me to disobey God because of you? I will say it. What God says, you say about you. But if you're a child of God, you will not hate me. You will go to the sender. It is not the deliverer. Go to the sender. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So, I will not, you, me, unless I did not see you. Don't ever say, Sister Linda saw me, and then you turn your face to her, and it is a lie. I pray always that God, even if I see those that are calling me name in the sea, let me hug them. Let me be happy with them. Let me love them. Just a minister or youth conference finished. Three of them went to the camp. And they came to God and then they called us. Ah, I was happy to go there. I was like, God, don't allow any problem. Let them come and be. I hugged them. I greeted them. Ah, you're welcome. Ah, how are you, sir? With smile. And I'm not smiling. Broke it. it is for my heart. Because I have made up my mind that I will not see Jesus on earth and then I miss him. I will see him live in heaven and touch him i have determined to make heaven and i know malice will take me to hell so i am fighting every sin that will make me to keep you malice god forbid it will not work hallelujah amen so have love towards your enemy god said love your enemy do not say love those that love you love even those those that hate you in your office you know your boss so like you always be greeting that doesn't mean you should go on, uh, on mojuba or be be doing compromising your standard no come on greeting good morning sir and uh, good morning please be thank you sir is there anything you want me to do sir always should. one day we'll sit and say ah if you when i'm treating this woman anyhow she's still obedient she's even calm if you when i'm wicked in her go there come back she's ready to do you think you are doing what? God, anyone that is treating you wickedly, God will deal with that person. So have love. Pray for love. Say, God, make me to love. First Peter chapter 4, verse 9. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of the temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. God knows how to deliver you. Go down to deliver the godly. You must be holy. You must be righteous. First Peter chapter, sorry, I'm in second Peter. First Peter chapter two. I went to first Peter chapter four. First Peter chapter four, verse nine. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. Hospitality. Use it. You will win souls. Don't be murmuring when you do good. Some people, when they do good, the church should not beg them or thank them. They will be angry. Don't do good for people to know itself. Just be calm. Some people say, ah, mommy, hey, hey, mommy. I say, shh, don't tell people. Just go. It is okay. Thank God. That is how. Not that we don't want, hey, we don't like praises. No, but that is for God. I did it in the name of God. Hallelujah. So continue to show hospitality, charity, love to people. Or else you will not make it to heaven. Continue. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. Don't have grudge in your heart. And you say, I'm showing him love. But your heart is black towards that person. Before you go and do charity to that person that have offended you, go and settle first with the person. Sister, I'm not happy with you. And when they come to you, please don't start a fight. Let everything be done in peace. Oh, sister, me too, I was not, I was not happy with you. You pray there and say, God, take away this pain. Or go to the church. Let them say to you, don't refuse peace. Don't say, we never talk to this sister. I, I will always be crying before God for this person. No. Leave God to judge. Hallelujah. He said, vengeance is mine. It is not you that will do vengeance. Hallelujah. Lastly, second, first Corinthians chapter 13. If you don't have love, you are not going to heaven. If you don't have love, you are not going to heaven. First Corinthians 13. If you don't have love, you are not going to heaven. Verse 1 to 5. Though I speak with the tongues of men. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1. 1 to 5. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkly cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy, do you see? Even if you speak the language of angel, your mouth is very sweet. You know how to speak English. You know how to preach. You know how to sing. You know how to pray. Even though I sing, I say things, I have not charity. Charity is love. I, am, I have become a sounding brass. You are empty. You are carcass. Satan is laughing at you. You are empty. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understanding all mystery, and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains and have no charity, I am nothing. 
Even if you can remove, you can pray down, fire will come down like Elijah. Even if you can prophesy and the thing come to pass, even if you can see vision, if you don't have love, you are just using those gifts in vain. You will not go to heaven. In fact, service will not take you to heaven. What takes to heaven is holy living, holy life, holiness. And that is what we are spelling here. If you don't have the L of holiness in your life, which is love, you will not go to heaven. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, even though you give all your goods, some people will gather their house, buy car, say, God says I should go for mission work. I have sold all my property. I have put all my, my, my pension. All my salary was going to the house of God. God knows how much I love him. Some pastor will be telling you, I've, I've built churches. I've gone to missionary. I've led people to Christ. Some big men of God, they passed through me. Do you think I will go to hell? Pride, pride. You are not going to heaven at all. You think I will not go to heaven? Some of you will be boasting. We are the ones sponsoring you anymore. I gave land to all more. I did this. I host Pastor Rica. I, yes, it's very good. That is a good life. It's a good life. But if you don't have love, maybe you're only doing it by outward, but inside your heart is black. My people in my country say white teeth, but black heart. Some of you, your life is like that. Hey, sister. <laughs> but inside, black. Stop that kind of life. Charity suffer long and is kind. Do you see the quality of charity? Don't suck love in your mouth. I love you, I love you, I love you. But you are not kind. Charity suffer long. You will bear with your husband, bear with your children, bear with your neighbor, bear with your own sinful family member, bear with the church, bear with your, your hardened pastor, leaders, workers, members, even your sisters in the church, their attitude, bear with them. Don't say, ah, I can't be in this unit. I can't be in this unit. I have to run away. There are evil people here. You that have the genuine love, beer. By you, you can change that church in Jesus' name. Let beer with them. So that is what. If you have love in you, you will have, and it's kind. Charity, envy it not. Don't envy. If you have envy spirit in your mind, somebody dressed where you are envy the person, you don't have the spirit of love in you. Hallelujah. Charity vendeth not itself. It is not puffy up. You are not proud. You are not boastful. Anything you do, you come and stand on the church. I want to thank God. I'm the one that buy a house for this person. I'm the one that dress this sister. I'm the one that buy cloth for this. That is not charity. Charity, don't puffy up. You don't carry your shoulder. Oh, I'm the madam in the church. People should worship me. No. Hide your goodness in the house of God. Hallelujah. So this is it. If you don't have love, you are walking in vain. You have to pray for the other day. The letter I, integrity. If you don't have integrity in your holiness, in your Christian life, you are not going to heaven. If you don't have integrity, let's read Job chapter 2. If you don't have integrity, you are not going to heaven. Because of time, I will be giving you scriptures. You can read for it, but let's just read this one. If you don't have integrity, you are not going to heaven. Your life should have integrity. That is what Satan fear. A man with integrity. Job chapter 2 verse 3. And the Lord said unto Satan, Has thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth? Why did God say Job is nobody like Job in the earth? Even you will be saying, eh? Millions of people in this world. God said nobody like him in the earth. Do you think God was lying? Is God a liar? If God is telling us that, Pastor Rika, you are my eyes on you. In the whole world, you are the people who say, this man is proud. This man is the holiness people are... It's because you don't read the Bible. That's why you judge a man of God, innocent person. But see what God is saying here about Job, God Almighty, that there is no darkness in him, no lie. How can God be praising Job when Job is done like that? God say in the old, he said, and the Lord said unto us, as thou consider my servant Job, that there is no like him in the earth. My brother, my sister, what in the whole world? A perfect and upright man, that is one, the quality of Job, that make God to say, Kai, nobody is like Job. There are people there who, they are calling on me. There are other prophets, other pastors, there are other believers, there are other people that believe in God. But Job is unique. Are you unique like that? Are you sure you have uprightness in heart? A perfect and upright man. One that what? Please, let's say it loud. One that what? He feared God. He can't do things that God will hold him responsible. He don't treat people anyhow. Some of you, you are your own leadership. You only love your tribal people. You only love those about you. Other people, you treat them anyhow. You are a partial leader. 
You are a partial woman leader. You are a partial holy woman. Call yourself. You are not holy. Oh. You are just a member in the church. You are just a Christian in God. You are not even a child of God. Your own Christianity, you only do good to those that love you. Only those that know you. Only your tribal people. This is my tribal person. In your car, you only give lifts to those you know. No. One that feareth God and eschew evil. He hates sin. Job hates sin. He can't sit down where they are committing sin. He can't sit with people that are planning evil. He don't want it. But you today, your house is where people go and criticize, plan how to bewitch, plan how to destroy, plan how to attack the church of God, plan how to destroy Sister Lena, destroy Pastor Rika, destroy that sister, plan how to manipulate the, the overseer to, to frustrate that sister. It's your place. He hates sin. He don't hear sin and play with it. No. He rebuke even his wife that way. He say you are a foolish woman. God's job hates sin. You, you don't hate sin. You watch sin on your phone and laugh. Your children will come and show you naked bitch and laugh. Ha, ha, ha. Your husband is committing sin. Ha, ha. Your children are committing sin. Hey, hey. Mommy, today in the school, hey. And they are putting all these things on their body. You know they are not living well in the school. You are busy laughing. Ha, 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 ha. You are not, you don't hate sin. You don't hate sin. Your husband will be testifying or somebody, you know this person is lying. It's your family member. You cannot say, what do you do today in the church? Go back. What's kind of thing in that? Husband, how can you say you're a leader, you're lying? You know that? Go back. Don't. I can't talk something that is not right, that the leader is there, you know. I cannot even try it. Daddy don't, as you seem like this, he will give it to you wrong. You will cry and move. He, you are crying, him, he have gone. So you don't need to play with sin. If you want to have the integrity of God, if you want to live a righteous life, if you want God to love you, if you want to enter heaven, and, st and still, he said, God, he said, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and eschewed evil, and still beholdeth fast is integrity, is integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without a cause. Satan, you make me to just go and do not allow you to torture this man. You know, this man has not done anything. But with all the suffering Job passed through, he still hold on to his integrity. You, you don't have integrity. Your Christian life, there's no integrity. You borrow, you don't pay back. You say something, you are not truthful. What you are saying is lie. In your office, people know that. In fact, people don't know you are a Christian. They only know you Christian by name, but they don't see the life of Christ in you. You work with Muslims, they cannot imitate, they cannot copy, they cannot like, they cannot be loved with Christ in your life. You call yourself, you don't have integrity. You don't have integrity. And because of Job, will have that integrity. Hold on to his integrity. Job 42, 12, 17. You see the blessing. I cannot read it now. You see the blessing that follows that in integrity. With all what happened in his life, Job all, hold on to his integrity in Christ. I believe in you. You that give it, you have taken. God, I will not leave you. I still believe. I still comport myself. People will laugh at me. Say, see here. See him. See her. He says, serve God. Poverty. Problem. Whose kind God be this? Everybody is dying in your family. You cannot change mountains. God, I still believe in you. I will not go give up. And God bless Job. More than before, in Job 42, verse 12 to 17, read it and see. If you read Proverbs chapter 11, verse 3 to 4, you will see the blessing of integrity. Our God will bless you. You that have integrity, you draw God closer to you. Hallelujah. Keep your holy faith with integrity. Please, holy children of God, that you are born again genuine, let your holiness go with integrity. Don't sell your integrity for money, for marriage. For child, some people because of child bear, they, they drop God. They go to sin. Because of money, they compromise the standard of righteousness. Because of marriage, I am not married. You begin to marry any kind of man. Go to the village and marry. Because of, because, of, because of money, because of fame, position, you drop your integrity. You become a liar. You defy yourself with, with iniquity. Please keep your holiness. And if you don't have integrity in your life, you are not holy. Without integrity, no man shall see the Lord. The second to last is new life. The end in holiness spelling is new life. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. A new life. Second Corinthians chapter 5. A new life. If you don't have a new life, my dear, no heaven, no. You must be a new creature. All things shall pass away. All things have become new. But some of you, 
that new life is still in you. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. It said, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Are you sure you are a child of God? Are you sure you are not a born again Christian? But why are we still seeing foxes in your, your tongue? Why your record keeping? Why your trust, your, tr your, your, your work in the house of God? You are a treasurer, but you are tampered with God's money. You are a leader, you are eating God's money. You eating it in the wrong way. Not that you use God's money, you use it on yourself, it's bad. But let it be lawful. Account for it, transparency, but you are shady. Your members are not trusting you. You yourself as a Christian, as a woman, you say a holy woman. People don't trust you. People say, no, 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 don't give her our money. Hey, this woman, no. You, take, you do some things. You don't have a new life. There is no new life in you. You still dress naked. You still dress seductive way. And you say you are a born again Christian. No, all things have passed away. How? Your same life, you still have anger. You still have malice. You still have unforgiveness. How do you say you are a born again Christian? My dear, please, if you die and stand before God, God say, tell me, your past life, you were full of anger, malice, you were full of um, bitterness, you are full of witchcraft and juju practice, you are still of naked dressing, seductive. Now you say you are a born again Christian, but the same characteristics, the same old man, people know you for you are still doing it. Then how will you say you are a child of God? A witch will say, I'm born again, but you are still flying in the night, soaking blood. You have not confessed. How are you born again? You are just wasting your time. You are waiting for that D-Day that God will cast you to hell. You still have lying tongue. You still fornicate. You still commit adultery. You still lost. How are you now saying you are born again? Tell the Lord, how are you now saying you are born again? How are you now saying a new life is in you? Without new life. No man shall see the Lord. If you don't change your bad behavior, your former lifestyle, if you don't change it, no heaven for you. Some of you still go to Baba, go and consult. I want to know the future. I want to know if this man is my daughter's husband. You don't consult with God. You still go to Abalis. You say, hey, God, no, now. It's God that gives lift. It's God that gives uh, power. These are satanic things. So you cannot go to heaven. You are still s stealing. You are still fighting, still quarreling. You are your husband on a quarrel. The way you people used to quarrel, the only thing that you don't do it outside is in the room. Scholar yourself, slap yourself, and you say you're holy. No holiness. You still gossip. You still, you still give bribe, take bribe. So these things, you are still an old man. You are still not new yet. Christ is not dwelling in you. And the E is entire consecration, commitment. The E, H-O-L-I-N-E. SS, we are going there. Holiness, we are spending it in your life. This is the powerful word of holiness in your life. If you don't have this characteristic, know that you are not holy. And ho no holiness in your life, you're not going to heaven. Know that you are not a child. The E is entire commitment or entire consecration to God's word and his lifestyle. My dear, holiness is not for one year. The holy dressing, don't dress it for two months, three months, one year. Or when you are not in hurry more again, we started seeing you putting in here, eh? wearing short skirt. No, now. Holiness is forever. Is it not so? Holiness forevermore. Till you die, you enter heaven. Don't say, I'm not a member of Horimon, or I'm not going to deeper life. God, I'm not going to, so I'm not bothered to wear holiness. I'm not going to another church. No. Holiness is forever. Consecrate yourself. Some of you, you say, God, call me. God, call me. You don't have time with God. You don't study the word of God. You don't pray. You don't ask God for direction. You are not consecrated to God. You are just doing your own thing. God, send me here. God, give me prophecy here. God, give me word of God. You are just opening ministry. God did not tell you to open ministry. You are not waiting to hear from God. You are not sober before God. Morning to evening, you don't pray. You don't have time. You don't fast. You don't study the word of God. From January to December, walk, 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 walk in the office. Come back late in the house. Sleep. Wake up in the morning. Go back. Pursuing money up and down you don't have time you spend before god my dear it will not work like this first king chapter 9 verse 11 to 12 elijah spent time god told him go to the mountain and be there i will meet you the god say go and stand in the market separate yourself go to the mountain and i will meet you there and when he was there praying, God visited him in verse 12. If you read the book of Numbers chapter 3, that is the one I want to read. Numbers chapter 3, see what God said there. Numbers chapter 3, how did the children of Israel was able to conquer the, the wall of Jericho, bring it down? Numbers chapter 3 is true commitment, consecration. You have to consecrate yourself. 
You have to separate yourself from sin. You have to come from among them, all these sinners' friends. A child of God is in the school, a youth. You say, I'm a child of God, but all your friends are sinners. Which holiness? Which holiness? Which heaven are you going to? You are just wasting your time. You call yourself holiness youth in the school, but all your friends are sinners. All your friends in the... In the, in the, in the and, and it's not bad. You can make a friend, a sinner, but make sure you change that friend. But you have been with that friend for 10 years, 5 years, 3 years, 4 years. The, the, child, the friend is not changing to holiness. Hey, my brother, then your light has dimmed. Because if they see the light of God in you, they will copy your life. Numbers chapter 3. Let's see what the word of God said here. Numbers chapter 3, verse 3. It says, These are the name of the son of Aaron. The priests which were anointed, whom he consecrated to him to minister in the priest's office. God make these children of Aaron say, Consecrate them, let them just be for my service. Everything about this world is not part of them. Their own, listen to me, pray to me, take word for me, go to my people, make your life to be sacred, make your life to be different from the, world, the worldly life. But see what happened. The, he said, verse 4, And Nabat and Habiu died before the Lord when they offer strange fire before the Lord in the wilderness of Sinai, and they have no children. And Elijah and Atama minister in the priest's office in the sight of Aaron, their father. God said, Consecrate yourself to me. Be holy, for I am holy. You are open mouth and say, God, call me. I'm a minister of God. God, call me. You are a minister of God. You are sleeping with men, defiling women, going up and down. God told them, consecrate Aaron children to me. And they went and give strange fire. God killed them. You think I'm playing? Some of you, you open ministry. God did not tell you. You don't even know how to run the ministry. Some of you, the gift of God in your life, you have useless it. You are not even using it the way God wants to use. You cannot consecrate yourself to God. God, how will I use this gift of dream? How will I use this gift of prophecy? How will I use this gift of preaching? The gift of singing song? The gift of winning? So some people are gifted in evangelism. But now your evangelism is robbing people. You are not consecrated. You are not before the Lord. So you will not go to heaven. You will not go to heaven. Joshua chapter 3. You will not go to heaven if you are not consecrated. If you are not determined to follow God. This holiness, you cannot make it. Last, lastly, if you are not consecrated to God, if you are, not con con you are not committed to the word of God, you are not giving yourself to God, you cannot make this heaven. Joshua 3 verse 5. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourself. For tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Why did Joshua have to tell them to sanctify themselves? Sanctify yourself. Keep yourself from sin. So that God will do wonders. You are in the church. There are people that are testifying. You cannot get wonderful testimony. You cannot be healed. Because your life is stained with sin. Every minute, any hour you are in sin. Please, from today, if you want to live a holy life, be a separate. Come from among them. Don't be like the worldly sinners. Don't be like the world. Be as a child of God. Hallelujah. Separate from secular or profound use and dedicate yourself to the Lord in prayer and every other thing you are doing. If you read Joshua chapter 6 verse 18 to 19, God was telling Joshua, tell them they should not defile themselves with the unclean things, which is this gold, this earring, this silver. They should not defile themselves, but consecrate these things to me, to the house of God. These things, gold, silver, it should be sell to come and bless the house of God or decorate the house of God with gold. But you put it into your body, you are defining yourself. If you read Joshua 6, 18 to 19, you will see it there. These things are defined. Don't allow them to put it on their body. Don't allow them to touch the unclean thing because you are going for a battle. And when the children of God obey Joshua, they did not touch the unclean thing. Everything called dwelling, gold, brass, they give it to Joshua for this. They, sanct they sanctify it, they, they secret it for the house of God. Only one shout, the wall of Jericho came down. So this is how you are hanging this thing on your body. You can call God. He will bless you, will answer you. But for heaven, you will not go to heaven. The second S is self-denial. Self-denial. Mark 8, 34. Mark chapter 8. The S. The second to last spelling in holiness. Mark chapter 8. If you don't have self-denial in you, no, you are not going to heaven. If you don't have this thing in you, some certain thing you don't have to partake in it. 
People can do. Say they, they can do, but me, I cannot. No, I cannot. You are a politician. You are a teacher. You are a businesswoman. You are a businessman. Anywhere you are, in the office, they are sharing polluted things. No, they can't. Me, I cannot. Eight, Mark chapter 8, verse 34. They read it very fast. Chapter 8, verse 34. He say, And when he has called the people unto him, which his disciple also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will serve his, whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. For what shall it profit a man if he will gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my word in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed, shamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with holy, with the holy angel. What shall it profit a man? What have you given up for God? You call yourself a holy woman, but God will ask you, what have you lost for the Lord? What are the things you will sit in heaven or before God and say, God, I drop this for God. I abandon this life for God. I separated myself for God. My people say, if, if I'm holy, they will cast me out of my family. I was cast away. But no, some of you, you will not. Marriage, you say, eh, I cannot live my marriage for holiness. You go and live the holiness. Some of you, come on, friends. The friends are laughing at you. Eh, my friends are laughing at me. You drop the standard of holiness. You drop holiness and follow friends. Some of you, property. God said, give this property to me. Leave it. Ah, no, I can't give it to God. Some of you have lands. The church is looking for land. You cannot close and say, I give to God. You have chairs in your house, fans. You have AC. You have money. God has blessed. You cannot say, let me close eye and give a boss to the, to the house of God. You don't have the heart to give to God. You don't have the heart. You want the pleasure of making not to follow God. If you do not come to the point of self-denial, you will never see the Lord. You will not be to heaven. You have to deny yourself. Even sometimes, deny yourself food. Say today, I will not eat food. I will be before the Lord for seven days. So that God must change the story of my family. God must change the story in the world. In Nigeria, in the church. But you don't have passion for God. You don't have passion for soul. You don't fast. You don't pray. You, you love food more than God. You have to deny yourself. Self-denial. If you don't have it, you will not make it. You have to have that spirit of Queen Esther. If I perish, I perish. Hallelujah. Let's read Mark, Matthew chapter 19. Verse 18 to... Let me just read this very fast. Matthew chapter 18. And see what God told that rich man there. God said it is hard for a rich people to make heaven. Know. And it's true. Because a rich person to sow seed to give to God. They will not. Ah, this is my car. Oh, this is my house. Oh, this is my... No, no, I cannot. You will not see God. You have to deny yourself in certain things. Give it to God. Ah, this money, this my tithe is too big to give to the house of God. You have one million. God say, give me 100,000. You have 10 million. God say, give me one million. Say, eh, one million? Ah, I will just give 200,000. You are doing yourself. You have to deny yourself. God say, all this money, I want it. Take it to the house of God. My house is looking for money. Take this, your five million, and give it to God. But God, what will, be, what, will, what will remain with me? God, what kind of... God say, go and give. He say, this is not the voice of God I will not give. You will eat the five million and die and go to hell. That five million was a sacrifice for you to open heaven for you, but you don't know. Matthew chapter 19 verse 18 say, he said unto him, Thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man said unto him, All these things have I kept for my youth. Up what lacked I yet? God said, Love your mother. Do charity. The young man came to him. I have been doing all this since I was young. I fear God. I do goodness. I love God. I did. Then God now says, See what Jesus told him now, verse 21. Jesus said unto him, If thou will be perfect, if you want to be perfect, I don't say all these laws you are keeping, you are fasting, you are preaching, you are holy. But see, if you want to be perfect, go and sell that thou hast and give to the poor. And thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come and follow me. But when the young man had that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he has a great possession. 
Then Jesus said to his disciples, Verily I said unto you, that, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of God, in the kingdom of heaven. The man said, I have kept this commandment. I am holy, I am righteous. God said, if you want to be perfect and want to enter that heaven, go and sell all your possession and come to me. Now, where is that rich man? He's in hell. What has he profited in the house? In fact, in Israel, they cannot locate where his house was again. But now he has gone to hell forever. If you will have sold all those things, and follow. Maybe Jesus was just testing him. If you will have make a meal, God will say, don't bother, let's go. But God knows that this is where his treasure is. This is where he adore. He, his house are his God. My possession. Some of you, your possession is your skin. My bleaching. If I leave bleaching, if I leave this shine, shine cloth, if I leave this money, if I leave this thing, you will leave them even if you don't want to leave them. When death comes, you will leave your jewelry, your attachment, your husband, your children, your car, your AC, your good room, and go and meet God. And God will judge you why you did not treasure heaven rather than silver and gold, rather than hearing lipstick makeup. So choose where you will spend your life today. And the last S, separation from the world and its deceitful pleasure. If you want to be holy, without separating yourself from the world, no man shall see the Lord. If you don't separate yourself from the world, you shall not see the Lord. If you don't separate yourself, James chapter 1. If you don't separate yourself from the Lord, separate yourself from the world, the sinful world, the attitude, the behavior, the lifestyle of the world, the party life, the worldly life, the naked dressing. The ad, today you married and divorced. Some of you have divorced three men. He said, eh, the world. Our pastor said, let my husband don't stress me. I can remarry. You are just following the worldly way. You are not following godly way. You will go to hell. James chapter 1. James chapter 1. We are running on this. is the last scripture. James chapter 1, verse 27 say, Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. To keep yourself unspotted from the world. You don't need to follow the things of the world. James chapter 4 verse 4. Ye adulterers and adulteress, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. If you are an enemy of God, which heaven are you going to? Anybody that loves sin, that loves evil, you are an enemy to God. You are an enemy to God. First John chapter 2. You are an enemy to God. If you love sin, if you love sin and you encourage people to do sin and somebody wants to give his life to God and live holy, say, who is holiness? Who told you? God, look at the heart. Don't remove this thing. We are going to heaven together. You are an enemy to God. You are hindering people not to serve God. God will judge you. First John chapter 1, First John chapter 2, verse 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the loss of the flesh, and the loss of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world. And the world passeth away, and the loss thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. You that love the things of the world, I hope media will be displaying this. All this makeup, dressing, perfume, bleaching, all this anger, malice, backbiting, joining hand to kill people, witchcraft, witch doctor, charm, charming your husband. These are all practice of the world. You are not going to heaven. You are practicing the things of the devil. You are enemy to God and you will not go to heaven. So now, this is the spelling of holiness. Holiness. Holiness, number one, do you have humility? H, do you have humility? Are you, a, are you having the spirit of humility in your life? Check your side because I'm calling altar call now. Do you want God to give you the spirit of humility so that your, your going to heaven will be perfected? And number two, O is obedient. Do you have the spirit of obedience? Are you obeying the word of God? If you are not obeying the word of God, you know you have lacked some things. You are not obeying God. Please, today, don't go without giving your life to God and say, God, make me to be obedient child of God. Because the Bible says the disobedient child of God, the wrath of God is coming upon them. And number three is A, loving. If you don't have a loving spirit, spirit you don't have the heart of love you don't have the heart of charity you need to pray for it god say in this word righteousness is a gift i give it to who i want to give god will give it if you desire it you ask for it god will give it to you some of you don't know how to give you love keeping than giving and it is better to give than to receive you have to let go and then the other one the other one is you have to love giving and then acts chapter 9 
verse 36 to 42, you see Tabitha there. Tabitha, because of his goodness, as he was giving to people, they pray God bring him back to life. Is it because of him not to preach? It's because of his goodness. The widows, they were crying. They told Peter, this woman is so good. Please, he cannot go. See the cloth, he even give us the widow. And Peter said, God, look at this woman. The people are crying. And they pray. And Tabitha come back to life. Some of you, your goodness will make a way for you. You cannot come back to life physically, but you will be alive in heaven. Your goodness will make a way for you to make heaven. So if you don't have the love of charity in your life, in your Christian life, you are running in vain. If you don't have integrity in your life, I've told you, you are running in vain. If you are duping people, when you are doing business, your own Christian business, people say, is this a Christian? He's duping people. You are not safe. You don't have a new life. You are a born again Christian by mouth, but your attitude is saying that you are still an old man in sin. You are not going to heaven. Number five, entire consecration. If you are not consecrated to God, you are too busy. You are scattered. Business have taken you away. Family life have taken you away. Children, property have taken you away. Hey, I don't have time before God. I can't go for prayer, warrior, mythic. I can't go for all night. I don't have time for evangelism. Everything about God thinks you don't have time. Chapter meeting, you don't have time. Conference, you don't have time. Come for prayer meeting. You don't have time. My brother, when you die, you will know whose time you will have. Self-denial. If you don't deny yourself from the worldly pleasure, you will not make heaven. And then lastly, separation from the world. Separation from sin. If you don't separate yourself from sin, from the accosting from your body, if you don't separate yourself from bad life, you are not going to heaven. Separate yourself from bad denomination. Churches that are not telling you the truth. Separate yourself from bad friends that are not telling you that let's follow holiness. They will hinder. Let's go to a nightclub. Let's smoke. Let's drink. And say, leave this thing. God look at the heart. And you're busy following them. They will tell you goodbye. See you no more. When you are in the grave, they will bye bye to you and turn your back. And you will go and be in hell forever. So now, if you want to give your life to Christ, I have told you this is examination. Are you now holy? Can you now stand up and say, me, everything is complete in my life. I have charity. I have humility spirit. I have obedience spirit. Nowhere God can find me guilty. I am a holy woman of God. You are not. Because you lack prayer. You cannot pray. You cannot fast. Some of you, you cannot do the things of God. You are a sinner. In one way or the other, you are sinned against God. That's why Jesus said, go and tell them. Many of them sitting here today, they have left my path. They are zealous in my house. They call themselves Christian. But they are like pagan before me. Today, go and bring them back to me. I never know God wants to bring you back. And this is the way God wants to bring you back. Please, I am calling you to holiness. First Thessalonians, we round up with this scripture. Verse 4. First Thessalonians chapter 4. This is Jesus say I should read these scriptures and tell you this is how he is calling you, calling you unto holiness. First Thessalonians chapter 4. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3 to 7. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye shall abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. We are called unto holiness. Furthermore, that we beseech you, therefore, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, as that ye have received of us, how we ought to walk, verse 1, that is where I'm ready, walk and to please God, so ye will abandon, abound more and more, for ye know that commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus, for this is the will of God. I have given you the commandment of God. This is the life called holiness. This is holiness. Holiness is not by mouth. I am holy, I am holy. It's not only by dressing. Yes, you can be holy by dressing, but the holiness must be in and out from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaker. You must be clean inside and clean outside. So when you stand, physically people see you as holy and spiritually heaven see you as holy. So your body should be holy. So now I am asking you, I am asking you, please, are you holy? If you know you are not holy, and you know, if you die now, Jesus come, you will not make it to heaven. Let's be on our feet. It is a time for you to rededicate your life. Or you that you have never given your life to Christ. You are here now to say, Jesus, I surrender. I want to live a holy life. Fear death, because death come at any time. It can come in the night when you are sleeping, you will not wake up. It can come when you are going, you, you fall and die. 
You can see mysterious death anyhow. BP is killing people, high blood pressure. It is not your portion, but you have to be careful. Rapture will take place at any time. The wall is getting more deep, darker in sin. And these things will trigger God to come. Witches and wizards are multiplying. God will soon come and rapture the wall. Will you be among the saints? Are you righteous? Or are you just walking in the house of God in vain? Please don't walk in vain. The Lord is calling you. So today, let's close our eyes. If you want God in your life, and you want God to transform your life, you want Jesus to give you this quality of a holy life, not only by words, but by behavior, lifestyle, a true lifestyle, an exemplary lifestyle of a holy woman. Now, anywhere you go, people will know you are truly born again. Raise up your hand. Wherever you are, please come in front very fast. Please come in front. I have this eye. We are not putting shame here. Don't look at somebody. Come to Jesus for yourself. You don't know when you will die. Some of you, your friends hinder you. Don't go and give your life. You can die before them. Come outside. You are a minister of the gospel. You have deceived people so many times. Today, I want to live a holy life. You are a member of Holy More. Don't be calling yourself and pride. No, I lack some things in holiness. I want God to bless me with the gift of love. Maybe you don't have humility. I need it. Or you don't have integrity. I need it. Come and tell the Lord to give you one or two of these things that I've said. God, I don't have the spirit of patience. Give me patience. God, I don't have love. Give me love. God, I don't have self -sep separation from sin. I still love the things of the world. God, come and separate me. Please come in front and tell the Lord to separate you from the things of the world. To follow Jesus. To no turning back. No turn. Please close your eyes and begin to confess or say, I give you two minutes. Pray to the Lord. Tell the Lord where you have air, where you have turned aside. Where you are only deceiving yourself because not God. You are holy, but you are not holy. Maybe you have been initiated in witchcraft. And they have threatened you that if you confess, we will kill you. My brother, my sister, let them kill you. But confess and make heaven. They cannot even kill you. Come and tell the Lord, God have mercy on me. Jesus, show me mercy. God, deliver my soul. God, I am here. I am a sinner. God, I am a child of God, but I am not up to your standard. God, I lack some, some things, some special things of holiness in my life. Oh, humility is not in my Christian race. Love is not in my Christian race. Father, have mercy on me. Jesus, give me the art of love. Give me your true spirit. Fool me. Put your power in me. Jesus, make me to be holy. God, have mercy on me. Jesus, have mercy on me. God, forgive me. My tongue have always made me to be a sinner. I lie. I gossip. Father, please cleanse my tongue. Cleanse my heart. Anger have destroyed the quality of God in my life. Anger have defied me. Love of the world have defied me. Jesus, take it away from me. Make me to be a true holy woman. Not by word, but by life, by character, by behavior. Jesus, that at the end, people will see me in heaven. They will not see me in hell and say, ah. You came here, you later came here, God forbid. Jesus, let me don't say I'm a child of God on earth alone, but I should be in heaven. Give me the characteristic of a holy woman. Design my life, transform me. Remove the garment of filthiness from my life. Jesus, trace me. Jesus, renew me. Polish me, Jesus. Put a new spirit in my life. In Jesus' name we pray. Raise up your hands and say this prayer after me. Say, oh Lord my God. I thank you for your word that I have not died before this time. Jesus, I thank you for opening my eyes to the true word of holiness. Lord, I confess with my mouth and with my heart I am not perfect. Now I know why I am still alive. It's because you want me to be saved. Jesus, today I give you my life. I give you my soul. I give you my spirit. I believe my, your word, what you have told your daughter to tell me. I am ready from today to follow you, to obey your word, to have the complete life of holiness. Give me the grace to do your will, to do your will. Give me the grace not to be a sinner again, but to be a holy child of God. Jesus, never leave me neither forsake me. 
Always correct me. I am ready. Give me the spirit of humility, obedience to your word. Give me the power of love to love people and to display your love in the world. Jesus, come into my life. I surrender myself to you. From today, you will be my Lord and my Savior. You will be my guidance. Anything you say, I will do. Father, Lord, bless me. Thank you for forgiving me. Write my name in the book of life and delete my name in the book of death. Have mercy upon me. Jesus, anything that is in me, that is, is a sin, I'm not aware of. Lord Jesus, speak to me. Send your angels to me. Send somebody to me and give me the heart to obey and to get rid of it. All the worldliness in the world that is drawing me back, give me grace not to love sin. Blind my eyes to the things of the world. Lord, I thank you. From today, let your holiness be in me. And I declare myself for you and I will be a holy child of God. Thank you for answering me. For in Jesus' name I pray. Father Lord, I thank you for these ones. I thank you for loving them. Jesus, you gave me a dream last night. I never knew it for this. But Lord, I thank you because you love them. Thank you, Lord, they have come to give their life to you. God, accept them. Forgive them for their past errors. Father, Lord, give them a new life. That people will truly know that truly they are now born again. That anywhere they go, their light will be shine. And men will give God glory because of you for them. Lord, use them greatly in this end time. That through them, their life will be example to other women in their church, in their family, in their, in their home. Anywhere they go, that through their life, many will come to Christ. Father, reward them for obeying you. Reward them for giving their life to you. Give them the blessing, the protection they are looking for. Through their life, oh Lord, you will save their family, their husband, their children. God, give them their heart desire. All what they have prayed for, Lord, give it to them. Lord, I bless you for their life. Cover them with the blood of Jesus. Fight their battle. Any one of them, Satan have caged. Lord, deliver them in Jesus' name. Write your name upon them. That anywhere they go, the name of Jesus, we bow the enemy before them. Sickness and disease will not destroy them. I cover them with the blood of Jesus. Father, give them the peace of salvation. Give them the peace of Christ. Let Jesus dwell in their home. Dwell in their life. Let them begin to see in vision and dreams. Let them hear the voice of God. Father, help then that Satan will not deviate them. Give them grace to continue. And at the end, all of us, give us the grace to make heaven. We thank you for today. We cover all of them with the blood of Jesus. And thank you for the women of Kubwa Zone for this opportunity. Reward them too in Jesus' name. Bless this zone in Jesus' name. And bless all more worldwide. Thank you, Lord, for in Jesus' mighty name I pray.